morning. Sleep well last night, Mr. Whitney? I hope so. Miss Fine Gunther? And yourself? Uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, but uh, I was just wondering if it wasn't all a dream. Did you really mean what you said? Oh, yes. I meant what I said, Gunther. I'm glad to hear that. You help me take out Gavin Wiley, and you'll be richer to the tune of $500,000. In cash? In cash. In whatever denominations you'd like, Gunther. That should keep you in rum punches on some tropical island for quite some time, Gunther. <laughs> no, actually, I've been thinking. I just might take all that bread and buy me a tropical island. Gunther Island. How does that sound? It sounds as if you've decided to cooperate. I'm willing to cooperate. The question is, will Gavin Wiley? Oh, yes, Gunther. That's uh, our responsibility to be convincing. Especially you. You have got to be convincing. Yeah, but to actually make uh, the guy believe that he killed me mm -hmm. with his own gun, that's not going to be so easy. That's right. That's why we can't take any chances. That's why our first stop today is going to be the Wiley Dance Studio. Huh? We're going to take a look at that gun. I hope you don't mind the tape recorder, Valerie, but this way it makes it easier for us to chat. And I won't forget any important quotes. Well, I don't know how many of those you're going to be getting. Oh, now just try and relax. Okay, okay. It's just hard to talk about myself. Well, even without your connection to your father's clinic in Lucerne, you still have a, a very touching human interest story to tell. So would you like to begin? Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, it was the summer of 1978. Um, several summers prior to that time, I had spent either traveling or with friends. But that July and August were set aside for me to be in Lucerne. Uh, there weren't very many patients at my father's clinic that summer, but Daddy did introduce me to Jim. Mm -hmm. And how did you react to him when you first met him? Well, it wasn't exactly love at first sight. He had bandages all over his face. And he was very withdrawn at first. Actually, the first couple of days, I could hardly get him to say much at all. And then, little by little, he came out of his shell. And we'd talk about things that we liked and didn't like. And we found we had a lot in common. We liked the same books and the same authors. Oh, he would quote from Browning and Keats and Shelley. I had never really liked poetry in school, but he made me love it. And anyway, in a couple of weeks, I guess he just felt close enough to me to tell me what happened to him in Vietnam during the war. These memories are very painful for me, Val. Well, you don't have to do this now if you don't want to. No. I want you to know how it happened. By the time I got to Nam, the fighting was pretty well winding down. But there were still small pockets of resistance. And my company, Charlie Company, we were assigned uh, to a mop-up uh, operation. Actually, it was more like search and destroy. And we were in the Mekong Delta in a rice paddy one day on patrol. And all of a sudden, there were these popping sounds all around us. And guys started dropping all around me. And the thing was, we were in the open. There was very, very little cover. And we returned fire as best we could. And we finally managed to find an old abandoned hut. And we retreated to it. And by that time, though, 
most of the guys were pretty badly shot up. The radio was gone. So they couldn't call for medical assistance or anything. So my company commander, Pete Harmon and I, we were assigned to go out and buy some help. But you were still in enemy territory? Yeah. And we got about, oh, must have been two miles or so. And we ran into some sniper fire. And we returned it as best we could. But Pete caught a uh, shell in the leg and tried to move to one side and uh, returned fire for a while. And then when things quieted down, I kind of half dragged, half carried him for as long as I could. And then I couldn't do it anymore, and he was losing blood. So I found a tree, and we tried to camouflage ourselves as best we could to wait for nightfall. I thought it would be safest then. But I was wrong. See, the VC are very, very proficient night fighters. And apparently they had been tracking us all along, waiting for us to show ourselves. And he opened fire, and... Well, it was pretty tough for a while, but I guess we were fairly lucky. We managed to hold him off. And then I saw an APC, a armored personnel carrier, coming towards us. And a grenade was thrown. It landed pretty near Pete, and by that time his reflexes were all shot to hell, so I, I didn't think about it. I just bounced on him and threw it as far as I could. And you talk about luck. It was a direct hit on an armored personnel carrier and put it out of action. But the shrapnel the started flying in all directions, and I... I caught all of my share of it, it seems. I laid there for a few hours, I guess, and uh, heard the sound of choppers, and it was medical help, so they picked us up and brought us to the hospital. So Pete went to one, I, I went to another, and then I was finally sent back here to the States, and I went from one VA hospital to another trying to patch my face up. Until finally it was decided that my condition required special attention and I ended up here. Jim, that was wonderful what you did. Saving your friend's life. Really, I've never met a live hero before. No, I'm, not, I'm not a hero. They can keep all their damn medals. All I want is a face. Well, you're going to have one soon. Yeah, but I don't have one now. And that's very unfair to you. A woman can't love a man like this. A face isn't the only reason one falls in love, Jim. I don't know. When I saw your face, I fell in love with you. It must have been quite a moment for both of you. I still don't know if he meant what he said or whether it was just the moment. Well, how did you feel? Well, at the time, my head was spinning and I was walking ten feet off the ground. I had never felt like that about anybody before. Yeah. First loves are usually very special. You're not kidding. Face or no face, I was in love with Jim Dietrichson. like mountain grown Folgers because mountain grown coffee has more enticing aroma and richer flavor than any other kind. That rich aromatic blend is your best morning friend. Starts you off feeling good. The day goes like it should. The best
Oh, what a party. What a mess. Lasagna. How will I get that off? Take me to your kitchen, Helen. You'll help do the dishes? Not with that lemon liquid. Here's something better. Introducing... <laughs> New Joy with improved cleaning. It's the most powerful lemon liquid for this job. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. It's got the super duper strength to help clean lots of tough foods. Look, Joy cleans better than your lemon liquid on foods like this. My brand couldn't cut the dirt. Joy left its dish shining. Joy made this sparkle. Uh-huh. Beautiful table you set. Thanks to Joy. <laughs> Take it from a lemon. One little squirt puts the toughest squeeze on dirt. New Lemon Fresh Joy. It's a nice reflection on you <laughs> and me. <laughs> on the next Saturday Night Mares, a group of young actors mysteriously disappear one by one. Tristan Rogers stars in the Flesh and Blood show. Then, a medical student plays a deadly practical joke on his roommate on the Alfred Hitchcock Hour. It's all on Saturday Night Mares. Saturday on USA. Bogey, the last hero. Excuse me, I gotta go and belt somebody. A USA premiere event at 3 p.m. Eastern, Sunday. And the sooner you can run that out, the better for me. Okay, thanks a lot. If I don't get some new students in here soon, I may have trouble making next month's rent. Good morning. Hi, is it a bad time to stop by? No, no, come on in. I don't have to be at school for a while, so I thought I'd come in and see how you're doing. Ah, I'm glad for the company. Care for a cup of coffee, got an extra? Sure. Have a seat. I'll serve you for a change. Oh, that sounds good. It's nice to see how the other half lives. <laughs> Here you go. I wish I could provide a floor show for you, but things are pretty dead around here right now. Well, that's okay. Talking to you is just fine. It's kind of strange. Not to hear any music. See my students going through their routines. So it's really official. You and Jody are no longer members of the Whitney Dance Company? That's right. Jody is home resting. I am here looking at an empty studio, and my ex-dancers are at the Whitney Theater rehearsing. So, yeah, I'd say we were out of it, all right. I'm really sorry it worked out this way. It has its advantages. I mean, for one thing, I don't have to spend much more time with Skylar Whitney. Yeah, well, he's gonna be sorry. I mean, how can he not be losing a talent like you? Thanks. If you ever decide to start a dance company, give me a call. <laughs> what are you gonna do now to make a living? Same thing I did before. I was a humble dance teacher before. I will be a humble dance teacher again. All I need now is students. Well, what happened to your old students? I sent them to other teachers. I can't expect them to come back now. Gavin, can, um, can anybody take lessons with you? Well, uh, sure. I, any dancer. I mean, anybody who's willing to work seriously. But, I mean, you don't just teach professionals. Well, Jody wasn't a pro when she first came. Although professionalism is what I aim for. Well, I think I know someone who might like to take lessons with you. Oh, yeah? Great, send her over. Or him, or it, anything. What? <laughs> it's a her. It's me. You. Yeah, you know, I used to take dance, I mean, a long time ago at the Y. And I'm a really good skater. Did you know that? No. I... Well, skating's sort of like dancing, isn't it? Well, not exactly, Bobby. You know, I think it'd be a really good thing if I could learn. I mean, I don't want to be a waitress all my life. Sure, I can understand that. But... Gavin, I can pay you. I've been saving money, and I still have my job at SIDS. Bobby, you don't know how much hard work it takes to be a dancer. And you're on your feet enough as it is, it says. I know what. Let me dance for you. Come on, it'll be fun. Come on, can I put this record on? And it don't laugh, okay? It's been a long time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six. It was pretty darn good, Bobby. It was better than I expected. You it's didn't forget. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, you'll take me on. You'll be my teacher again. Well, you gotta understand something, Bobby. When, when someone like me teaches a dance class, it's a kind of um, a group effort. I mean, I do work with individual dancers, but I work mostly with a whole group. So what difference does that make? Well, I... I have to wait till I get the whole class together to see how they work with each other. But you gotta start someplace. Oh, I get it. You, you just don't want to start with me, right? I'm not good enough. No, I, I didn't say that, Bobby. 
you got to understand what, how many people I looked at before I chose my last group of students. I mean, I turned down professionals because I didn't think I could help them. And you don't think you can help me? Uh, you want me to be honest, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you have to be, Gavin. I just didn't think there'd be any harm in asking. Listen, I'd better get over to Sid's and see if I'm still good enough to wait on tape. Oh, come on, Bobby. Don't take it personally. It's nothing to do with you. No, of course it's got nothing to do with me. You know, Gavin, if you want to be so honest, why don't you just say it? Why don't you just say it? It won't have anything to do with me. Oh, come on, Bobby. It's not true. It's not fair. Who leaves a shine so shiny, you have to ask? Is it wet? No, it's dry. A shine so shiny you have to ask. Is it wet? Nope, it's dry. Who leaves it shine without streaking, without rinsing? So convincing. Is it wet? Is it dry? You know the answer, you know the guy. Mr. Clean's the man. Oil's light taste brings remarkable lightness to salads. Remarkably light, ooh, delightfully light. Ah, true flavor in every bite. Crisco Oil's light taste sets the flavor free. Next to corn oil, specially made Crisco Oil looks lighter, is lighter. But it's really Crisco's light taste that brings out salads' true flavor with no oily taste and no cholesterol. Deliciously, Crisco Oil's light taste sets the flavor free. Cablevision and ESPN bring you the best in college football action. See all your favorite CFA teams on Cablevision's ESPN and register to win a trip for two to see Brigham Young University as they take on Hawaii on December 7th. That's right, you could win an all-expense-paid trip for two to Hawaii courtesy of Regency Travel and Cablevision. Enter the drawing today at any of these sponsors. Airport Toyota, 1653 East Brooks Road, Regency Travel, 3003 Airways, and 2287 Union, John Ellis Chevrolet, Airways at Brooks, Mobley and Sons, 6327 Poplar Avenue, and Performance Toyota, Mount Moriah at Mendenhall. There will be one winner drawn per week for a case of old style beer and an ESPN sweatshirt. Then the weekly winners qualify for the drawing for the grand prize trip to Hawaii. Imagine, Hawaii in December. It could be you, so don't wait. Enter today and watch ESPN for the best in college football. So, how did I do? Well, if I had any gold stars, I'd give you two. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, you were the most cooperative and informative person I've interviewed in a long time, and I couldn't ask for more. Well, I guess I still feel a little bit strange, though, uh, letting it all out. Hillary, there isn't anything wrong in expressing human emotion. Oh, no, no, but sharing that emotion with hundreds of thousands of readers sort of gives me the willies. Oh, please, uh... I promise it'll all be handled very discreetly. Oh, Nancy, I'm sure of it. Really, I'm not worried. And you know, for a long time I felt very resentful of Jim for not keeping his promise and staying in touch with me. Well, maybe, uh, maybe there was a reason for that. Sure, it was a summer romance and nothing more. Well, now let's see. For the sake of speculation, what if the surgery wasn't a success? My father was very good, Nancy. Okay, but what if the lieutenant was disappointed and he didn't want you to see a face that you couldn't love? That's possible, I guess. But I think I would rather believe that he just lost interest and that the surgery was successful for his sake. Come in. Hi, Hi, darling. Nancy. Hi, Val. How hey, are Dad, you? Fine. Good. I'm here to take this uh, lady to lunch. Oh, how nice for you. <laughs> oh, how'd the interview go? Well, we're all done. You look forward to reading that. Uh, when will it appear? And tonight's edition, and I want to thank you again for those pictures. Oh, sure. You know, I hope that this uh, article is a good idea. Well, Kelly, Dr. Bryson put the lieutenant's identifying numbers in the letter to Val for some reason. I wish I could figure out what was going through his mind. Oh, it's all so mysterious. What Maybe else? this patient was one that your father didn't like to talk about openly. Maybe Dietrichson was one of his less legitimate cases. You're wrong about that, Kelly. 
Now, he was a soldier and a war hero. Okay. Okay, don't be defensive. Hello, Gavin. Looks pretty empty around here. Let's get it over with, Sky. I assume you're here to settle our contract. Mm-hmm. Have you spoken to an attorney? I don't have to tear it up. Well, those are my sentences, exactly, but uh, what's it going to cost the Whitney Dance Company? Nothing. Do you mean that? Look, I'm just as anxious to quit as you are to fire me, and I don't take money that I don't earn. Well, you know, the company may be using some of those dances that you choreographed, Gavin, and you may be due some money. Consider my contribution goodwill. Now, let's just tear up that contract and pretend the whole thing never happened. That's fine with me. television viewers can you spot the single most stunning detail on this genuine full-length ranch fur coat you can't see it no one can it's the price tag just 149 repeat just 149 dollars for a genuine fur coat pamper yourself in the swirl the thick creamy luxury of well-bred ranch fur soft rich the glistening movement of natural rabbit fur warms you against the winter blasts, wraps you in the confidence of being that woman in the fur coat. Real, full-length fur. Look at this amazing comparison. On the left is a mink coat. Beautiful, but it costs thousands of dollars. On the right, our ranch fur. Real fur. Cost an incredible $149. Most important, it's lavished with luxury details like superb quilted lining, finely stitched from collar to hem, from shoulder to cuff. Pockets are deeply set, fully lined. Notice the depth of pelt that gives the unmistakable radiance of real fur. The rolled collar is pure luxury. Down for the elegant tailored look, up for a dash of fashion. There's even a sash for a slender look. Wear it for me. wear it daytime, wear it over anything, or almost nothing at all. It's a classic, always stunning, always right, 
always highlights you as that woman in the fur coat. Small, medium, and large, your correct size guaranteed. Supplies are limited, so have your credit card ready now and call for rush delivery. To order your ranch fur, call 1-800-USA-1000 or send $149 plus $10 shipping and handling to Ranch Fur, Post Office Box 2446, Atlanta, Georgia, 30301. Or have your credit card ready and call 1-800-USA-1000. Nancy, I read somewhere that even newspaper reporters get hungry. Now, how about joining me in Val for lunch, huh? Oh, yes, please, join us. Oh, I would love to, but I'm afraid duty calls. Don't you have an hour to spare? No, darling, I'm afraid not. Not if I'm going to have this story ready by the deadline. I have a meeting with my editor five minutes ago. Oh, dear. Oh. Well, we'll make it another time. Soon. Okay, I look forward to it. Oh, here are the pictures, and thank you very much. Yes, you those? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye for now. Bye -bye, Thank nice. you again, Valerie. Why, you two certainly made an interesting couple. That summer seems like ages ago. <sighs> yeah, I, w I was thinking last night about what you said about being in love with Jim. Kelly, my relationship with Jim happened a long time ago under very special circumstances. Yeah, I, I know that. And so I really don't see why it should bother you so much. It just does. Well, Gothic, not only do we know where the gun is, we also know what caliber it is. Yeah, well, I guess the next step is mine, right? Well, don't worry, Mr. Whitney. The next time I see Gavin Wiley, I'll make sure he uses that little... <laughs> Let's go to bed. Honey, there's something I'd like you to sleep on tonight. Oh? I think we should enroll in Union Fidelity's Guaranteed Life Plus. It's an insurance plan for folks age 45 to 74 that... Long day, let's go to bed. Honey, there's something I'd like you to sleep on tonight. Oh? I think we should enroll in Union Fidelity's Guaranteed Life Plus. It's an insurance plan for folks age 45 to 74 that... Gar Bum, bum, bum. Beep, bum. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Whitney. I uh, wasn't expecting you until later this evening. Yeah, I came home to change. What are you all dressed up for? Hmm? Oh, uh, just relaxing a little bit, that's all. You look like you're relaxing. <laughs> what is this? Oh, uh, uh, see, that's a, a little drink that uh, see, Chrissy had this pineapple that she used for a dessert, and she hollowed it out so I could have a little... Uh, Coconut drink. Uh, I just love coconut drinks. <laughs> it's a lot of rum, right? Mm. Uh, listen, can I get you anything, Mrs. Whitney? Oh, well, sure. Why don't you get me one of those in the bathtub? Bathtub? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. So, w w what are you doing? Trying to get in the mood, or are you going on a vacation? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Mr. Whitney, he suggested that I uh, maybe I should take the time and take a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I've always been crazy about the islands. Oh, Mr. Whitney and I were going to go here on our honeymoon, but we decided not to. You know, it's done so often. Mm, well, not by me, Mrs. Whitney. Mr. Whitney and I are going to go to the Alps on our second honeymoon. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> to each his own. Well, uh, have a nice time. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Whitney. <clears throat> Baby, I am going on a honeymoon forever. <laughs> Half a million dollars for one little practical joke. Mm. 
Miles and miles of pink white beaches and incredibly blue sea. The sweet smells of poinsettia and wood, wood, whatever. Beautiful women wearing almost nothing but their suntans. <laughs> yeah, sure, Mr. Whitney. I'll let Gavin Wiley kill me if I can live like that. from a wheelchair. Stay away, I'm warning you, I'll use this. Well, come on, come on, let's get this over with. I got better things to do than to break legs. I got a hot date tonight, and guess who with? I'll kill you, Gunther, I swear. This is a sweet little thing named Jody Travis, and she has been begging me for a date, and tonight is the night. Tonight is when she finds out the difference between a man and a boy, yeah. She's been begging for my attentions, and I'm gonna give her everything she can take. Get away or I'll shoot! You haven't got the guts! <laughs> you missed! <laughs> you better give me that little gun before you blow your foot off. Ah! Between me and Jody. 
They're a whole lot different. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. things are all hearts and flowers now, but I knew it was going to happen all the time. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, 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 I did. Ever since the first time you yelled at her and told her what a dumb clunk she was, that she had uh, two left feet, no rhythm, uh, no balance, and no future. <laughs> but I tell that to all the girls. Yeah, but it was the way you said it that time. But seriously, I, uh, I'm real glad for you guys. I mean, if you can't have money, at least you got love. Mm. I'll take love any time. You know, Calvin, this job used to mean a whole lot to me. But it just didn't matter that I quit because of, because of Jody. Oh, oh, watch out for that compassion stuff, my man. You can take it too far. And where have I heard that before? I don't know. Where? Some advice I uh, got from a lady lawyer. Mrs. Williams, I told your son exactly what it was all about, and he understood perfectly. No, that money doesn't settle the case. It's just an assurance that he'll show up for trial. Yes, it is terribly important. So if you hear from him, tell him to call me immediately. He has both numbers. Yes, if he doesn't show up, it could be very bad for him. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. You got troubles, huh? Troubles? <laughs> oh, no, my new client, Marcus Williams, may have jumped bail, that's all. That always makes the case more difficult. It gets worse. I'm the one who raised his bail. Dee, Dee that's terrible. How many times have I told you when you tell a joke, hit the punchline? It gets worse. I'm the one who raised bail. This is no joke. I got a $10,000 bail bond, and if he doesn't show up, I'm the one who has to pay it back. You're not kidding. No, I'm not. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. What makes you go and get bail for just this Just a kid, Cliff. It never occurred to me that he'd run out like that. I just hope... Maybe he just spent the night with some friends or something last night. No. No, I have this horrible feeling that he just ran away. I went to college. I know how to do the laundry. You got a degree in laundry? Hey, it's simple. Everything goes in warm. Viv, it's not that simple. Oh, a quiz show. Look, warm is good for a lot of stuff, but white socks go in hot or they won't get clean. Okay, gotcha. White's in hot. A beep. It's white. It's got chocolate on it. It's my warm-up jacket. Cold. Okay, cold, warm, hot, three temperatures. Jack. Three detergents? Don't panic. All temperature cheer. You see, cheer works in all temperatures. Hot, warm. Even cold? Trust me, college man. Hey, great. White socks, the chocolate, everything is clean. Now I know everything. <laughs> Beep. Three temperatures, one great clean. That's today's all temperature cheer. When towels fill this sock, jump in. sheets fill this fresh. Jump. And there's no cling to most jump, anything. Jump, 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 jump. You've got bouncers, clothes you can't wear. To find something that cleans and moisturizes at the same time in one bar, Dove is a thousand times better than soap. We asked women across America to give up their ordinary soap and take the Dove seven-day test. Soap dried my skin out. Dove made it feel soft. Dove is one quarter moisturizing cream. It doesn't dry your face like soap. Dove makes you feel prettier because it makes your face feel so soft and touchable. Dove is better than soap. You can feel it in your skin. Dove is the best thing that's happened to my face. Well, I'm sure you were very surprised when you received my invitation. It's just that I'm renewing some old friendships, and it's very important to me, especially now. Well, why especially now? Well, April was my nearest and dearest friend, and she's gone. Oh, well, you don't lose friends just because they've moved away. It's... All right, I understand how you feel. Well, I do. I feel lost without her. It's too bad that you missed the farewell dinner that we had for her. Yes, I couldn't go. We had a prior commitment. Oh, I 
see. But I'm glad that I could see you now, and I was hoping maybe we could um, arrange a dinner date for the four of us. Oh, that would be nice. After all, I hardly know your husband. Yes, well, I'm still discovering little things about him myself. <laughs> of course, that's why I asked you for that information a while back, remember? Yes, yes, about the plane crash. By the way, you never got back to me on that. Did you discuss it with Sky? Yes, I did, and you know he really wasn't uh, secretive about it at all. It's just that he didn't want to think about it. You know, his friend had died in the crash. Oh, friend. The, the friend, what was the friend's name? Brown, I think. Jefferson Brown. Yes, Jefferson Brown. Well, the name isn't really important, you know. Um, they weren't really close friends. It's just that Sky was the pilot, and he felt terrible about what had happened. Uh. Uh, Raven, what did Skye tell you about Jefferson Brown? Well, just that they had met in Switzerland. Why? Well, did he tell you where he came from? Uh, he was an American. Why are you so interested? Well, you're the one who brought it up. No, um, did Skye happen to mention the possibility that Jefferson Brown might have lived in Washington? Washington? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I see. Oh. Well, then maybe I could tell you something. I don't know if he lived in Washington, but I, I know that he had worked in Washington for a man, um, Fowler Wilcox. He was uh, an official in the State Department, apparently a very important official, according to Geraldine. Geraldine knew him? Mm-hmm. Only slightly, slightly. Uh, they might have gone to the same dinners and that sort of thing when she had uh, gone with her husband on official occasions. So Geraldine knew Jefferson Brown's employer. What a coincidence. Oh, Geraldine knew everybody in Washington. You know that. Um, Geraldine is, is living with us now. Do you know that? Um, for, for, from now on? Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's lovely that she's back in that house again. And with a new family. Mm-hmm. Are my eyes deceiving me, or is this Valerie Bryson? Hmm? Yes, that is indeed. I did that story on Valerie and one of her father's patients, Jim Diedrichson. Taking the day off was a great idea. Yeah. Now what do we do? Something new, something different. Like what? While well, you're thinking, him to my antiperspirant. No. No? Try my spray. It's strong. Do something different. I did. I switched to Secret Solid. It works better than your wet spray. Better, huh? Then maybe... Ah, Secret Solid's pH balanced for women. Now go and fix us some breakfast. Me? Do something new. Something different. Secret Solid. Strong enough for a man. But pH balanced for a woman. If you can see the difference between this and this, smile. Because Gleam can make the same difference in your teeth. You see, only Gleam has calcium pee. Laboratory tests prove it gets stained teeth whiter than any leading fluoride brand. Whiter than any gel, whiter than any polish. How much whiter? 30% whiter. And you still get Gleam's proven fluoride protection. So if your teeth aren't as white as they can be, start brushing with Gleam. You'll be smiling. Pretty. Hey, Mrs., we've got something great. We've got something great in Memphis. We're season, the CBN Cable Network presents Doris Day's best friends, celebrities and their pets, and joining them these famous faces, Gunsmoke's Marshall Matt Dillon, Napoleon Solo, The Man from Uncle, Eddie Albert in Green Acres, and Bill Bixby in the courtship of Eddie's father. Also new on CBN, original family drama, Butterfly Island and The Campbells. See what's new this season on CBN. Very interesting, and she never even saw his face. No. It is fascinating, isn't it? My editor thought so, too. People like love stories, but if there's an element of mystery in it, it makes it all more exciting. Do you think she was really telling the truth? I mean, I met Valerie Bryson once, and you know, she seemed the sort of girl that, that likes to romanticize. 
No, I'm sure there's no doubt about it at all. I believe she was telling the truth. Oh, well, I'm sure she met this patient. It's just that, well, how could there have been any romance? I mean, look at his condition. Well, romance takes on many forms. But his face is wrapped in bandages. I mean, they couldn't even kiss. Well, that doesn't mean that they couldn't feel something for each other. Well, I think it was just on her side. I mean, she was only 18. When you're 18, you know, you tend to uh, fantasize a lot. I don't think there's any doubt about her feelings. And as far as Jim Diedrichson is concerned, well, I don't see how he could have resisted her. I mean, she's such a, a pretty girl. She's a charming young lady, don't you think so? Uh, you're an investigative reporter. Why would you want to write a, a trite little story like this? Well, it's because of her father. Dr. Bryson wrote some numbers in the corner of a, a letter that he had left for her just before he died. What kind of numbers? Well, at first we thought it was a bank account, but then um, we discovered that they were the numbers for, you know, a patient's identity. You mean Diedrichson? Yes. And so we thought that the only reason he might have have made these numbers known to Valerie is to indicate that possibly this Diedrichson was somewhere nearby. That's fascinating. I'll have to finish this article. I'll, I'll buy a paper on the way home. Oh, please, take that one. Oh, may I? Sure. Hmm. Yes, I, I think that my husband would be very interested in this article. I can't believe you, Dee Dee. Where did you get your law degree? In a Cracker tax box? Where does it say that a lawyer puts a bail for his client? Cliff, he was desperate. His mother was desperate. And there's just the two of them. His father ran out on him when he was just a kid. And she's sick most of the time. And she doesn't have any social security. She won't go on welfare. Marcus is their only source of income. Yeah, he supports the family by robbing old ladies. This was his first offense. This was the first time he was caught, you mean. Oh, great. Now you sound just like Calvin. Calvin is not always wrong, Dee Dee. Cliff, Marcus had already been in jail for almost two weeks in that miserable facility out on Walton Island. I thought if he were out on bail, at least he could work until his trial. So you, having all the money in the world, just wrote out a check for $10,000. I did nothing of the kind. I went to a bail bondsman. But you're responsible for that money if he runs out on you, which apparently he has. How are you going to come up with that money, huh? You can't even come up with rent. Is that a hint, landlord? Look, Dee Dee, suppose it was his first offense. What did he do? What did he do? Dee Dee, what was the charge? Attempted robbery and assault. On a woman 74 years old. I suppose she dies from that assault, huh? What do you have then? You got murder one. A good DA in this town has a very good one. Could make that stick without batting an eyelash. So you think that Marcus skipped town to avoid trial, is that it? Mm-hmm. You think I made a big mistake, don't you? I think you may spend the first five years of your career paying back that big mistake. I know he's going to show up. He's got to come back. <sighs> Certainly hope so, Dee Dee. You got the name of the bail bondsman? Oh, great! You would have to deal with him. I'll give him a call. Good night. Thanks a lot, Cliff. I think. Look, if you uh, can't come up with rent this month, don't let it worry you. I'll take it out in legal advice. Oh, great. You'd be a big loser then. Money, lady. Can't travel without money. I got to travel. Driving while under the influence of alcohol is the biggest single cause of highway accidents by far. That's why we have to learn certain facts about what we drink. A TV commercial that teaches those facts exists, yet the ABC, NBC, and CBS television networks refuse to air it. I don't understand why. 
take a look. Drinking and driving is the major cause of highway crashes because people don't know enough about what they drink. They don't know that 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, and one and a quarter ounces of liquor, all typical servings, have the same alcohol content. These facts are so important, they've been made part of the driver's manuals of 24 states so far. These states realize that drivers have to know these facts before they drink and drive. Those facts are so important, I urge you to tell them to everyone whose safety you care about. I'm asking you to help, because the networks won't. They're playing our song. When you're the life of the party, you never sit. Ethel, they're playing our song. But your dirty dishes do, and that can leave you with a real headache the next morning. Uh. That's the time to reach for sunlight dishwasher detergent. Lemon Sense Sunlight cuts tough, stuck on food easily. Nothing cleans dishes that sit better. Ah. Try Lemon Sunlight. It really stands up to dishes that sit. Pizza crumbs on the floor in the kitchen? Quick! Get them with a quick up! Cookie crumbs on the floor in the bedroom? Quick! Get them with a quick up! Potato chips on the floor in the living room? You know what to use? The Eureka Quick Up Vacuum Cleaner. It's cordless, rechargeable, and mounts on the wall. There's no quicker way to get a mess. The Eureka Quick Up. It's cordless. So look, what do you say we uh, go over to Sid's Tavern and get a bite to eat? You know, I'm actually beginning to like that place, I think. Or uh, have you got plans? Mm, sounds good to me. Let me just grab a sweater, huh? Good. Say, listen, have you uh, had any more trouble with uh, Gigantor lately? You mean Gunther? Yeah, any more collisions with him? Well, I saw him yesterday when I went to see Whitney about Jody quitting the company, but nothing serious happened. Oh, that's a surprise. Uh, I promised Jody that I wouldn't, that, you know, I wouldn't do anything. I'd stay away, and that's exactly what I did. Hmm. About as far away as a glass of vodka can travel. And what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, he got a little hot under his collar, and I threw a drink in his face. Sort of cooled us both off. And you call that staying away from him, man? Don't you know a guy like that would rather <laughs> take a punch than an insult any day? <laughs> I thought he took it pretty well. <laughs> I suppose he decides to walk in here and do something about it one day. Ah, uh, if he does, I'll take care of him. Oh, you will? Yeah. What, have you been, uh, taking judo lessons or something? Uh, no, I, uh, I bought a gun. You what? I bought a gun. What's wrong with that? It's the right of a free citizen to bear arms. Are you crazy? Hey, it's all legal. Calvin, I got a permit and everything. Gavin, this is insane, man. Um, look, give me the gun. Where is it? No, forget it. Let's go do something to eat, huh? Wait a minute. Look, look, um, why don't you give me the gun? And I'll, um, I'll get your money back. Now, how's that for an offer? What is wrong with having a gun? You're carrying one right now. I am in the gun-carrying business. You happen to be a dance instructor. So what? Hey, come on, don't worry about it. I already told Gunther that I have a gun, and it'll probably be enough to scare him away. Now, let's go get some chow. I think I'll have a say. You did say you were buying You know, I don't you? really think you understand how serious this I is. I understand. You don't keep weapons around. They get used, you it's know? It's just for protection. Look, 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 man, I've got to talk to you about this gun. Six. 
Rock 52 certified number one original hits by the stars who made them great. your MasterCard or Visa. Call toll free 1-800-824-7800. That's 1-800-824-7800. Or save COD and handling charges by sending check or money order for 1995 to Party Rock. PO Box 7000-78, Palm Springs, California. Please specify records, 8-tracks, or cassette tapes. <laughs> 